Welcome aboard America's Historic Steam Railroads. Hello, I'm Bob Schreiber, and today we're going to visit three very unique steam railroads in the state of New Hampshire. These railroads are situated in the beautiful White Mountain National Forest, with the White Mountain Central Railroad located at Lincoln, the Mount Washington Cog Railway at Bretton Woods, and the Conway Scenic Railroad located at North Conway. We'll be traveling aboard White Mountain Central Railroad's beautifully restored Climax locomotive. And we'll take a look at one of America's few remaining turntables at the Conway Scenic Railroad. And we'll climb up the steep grades of Mount Washington on the world famous Cog Railway to the summit and the home of the world's worst weather. Set back, relax now and enjoy the next half hour of America's historic steam railroad. Before our trip up Mount Washington, our crew services the train and locomotive, making sure the windows are clean and the locomotive has been properly lubricated. Passengers purchase their tickets at the new Marshfield base station. After each trip up the mountain, the locomotive is back down to the coal tipple, where it has the ash pan emptied and cleaned. The tender receives a new load of coal. Each locomotive is different in consumption of coal. Uh, this particular one will go through a ton of coal on the way up. Locomotives weigh approximately uh, roughly 15 tons. The trip takes roughly an hour and 20 minutes to get to the top. We give you some time at the top and an hour and 20 down for a total round trip of about three hours. Thank you. If you do have any questions, I'll be happy to take them during a couple of our stops when I stop to give you some more history and stuff like that. In the late 1800s, passengers arrived at the base station in stagecoaches for a grand trip up the mountain. Old Pepper's ass is seen here on the mountain. And now the locomotive enjoys the view of Mount Washington from its display position at the base station. The vertical boiler soon gave way to the current style of locomotive with the horizontal boiler that we see today. Old pepper sass was used from the very beginning in the actual construction of the railroad as seen here on Jacob's Ladder Trestle. In order for workers to get down off the mountain faster than the three miles per hour of the train, they invented a wooden sled nicknamed the Devil's Sled.
with their toolbox between their legs, they came down the mountain at speeds up to 60 miles per hour. And it was not uncommon to come down in groups. Changes to the ratchet on today's railroad now prevent the devil slides from being used for obvious safety reasons. We're at our Wombat tank. This is where we're going to take on some additional water. We do need the 1,000 gallons I'd mentioned before, but our tender only holds about 600. We're about a third of the way up, so we'll go ahead and top off the tank, and this will last us until we get up to the top again. Right now, our fireman has shoveled in quite a bit of coal. He does go through a whole ton of coal, and what that averages out to is a shovel full every 20 seconds. He's doing this with one arm, only one hand on the shovel. The other hand actually opens and closes the firebox door. We don't have any automated doors or anything. He, he scoops up a shovel full, opens the door, throws it in, closes the door. We get up a little bit further, we're going to come to a little red house. It'll be right here on your right-hand side. We call it the engineer side. That's our halfway house. It is built perfectly level. We will be climbing at 25%. By building this house level, it lets you visually get an idea of how we're climbing. Jacob's Ladder's our steepest climb. It's the second steepest climb of any cog railway in the world. That is 37 and a half percent. Basically what it means is on this particular coach we're riding, that front seat is gonna be 14 feet higher than the back seat. Not only will we be going up at 37 and a half percent, we will be 30 feet off the ground on a trestle and we'll be going around a slight curve. It's a lot of fun. It's best to remember that the weather can change quickly on the mountain that is known for the world's worst weather. Our switches are the most complicated in railroad history. They have nine moving parts. Each part has to be moved by hand. That's the job of the brakeman. I think one of the best views in the world, we poked through the clouds so you could see the white cotton all around you. I just, I can't get over that. That's still awesome to me. And uh, that's why I love working here on the railroad. It's always changing. No two trips are ever the same. You're also visiting the home of the world's worst weather. So it isn't that often that we get a crystal clear day. In fact, the highest wind speeds ever recorded on the face of the earth were recorded about 100 yards from where we take the people off the train. And that was in 1934 when a man measured a top wind speed of 231 miles an hour. The locomotive and passenger car are able to remain on the steep tracks by means of a geared cog and ratchet system. The cogs are located under the center line of the locomotive. The passenger cars also have two cogs connected to the braking system of the passenger car. The cogs are engaged into the ratchet located between the rails, allowing the locomotive to literally pull itself up the mountain while pushing a passenger car.
The first locomotives were built with a vertical boiler that pivoted to allow for changes in the grades on the mountain so that the boiler would always remain upright. Today's locomotives are constructed with their boilers tilted to 25 degrees on the locomotive frame, allowing the boiler to basically remain horizontal on the average 25% grades of the mountain. The locomotives have wheels like most locomotives, except that they do not provide any tractive power. They merely keep the locomotive on the tracks. The tractive power comes from the center line cog gear that engages into a ratchet placed between the rails. Each locomotive has two driving pistons on each side. The drive shafts power a set of gears connected to the center cog. On our way down the mountain, we are afforded an excellent view of the vast valleys and mountains that are part of the White Mountain National Forest. As we're coming down the mountain, uh, the engineer uh, sets his speed uh, by an air valve, and that uh, controls the compression of the locomotive. And the brakeman also has capabilities of braking, and he maintains the constant um, rate of speed on, on, the, on the grades by applying his brakes. The locomotives and passenger cars are constantly cared for and maintained at the railroad shop with its unique transfer table to shuttle cars and locomotives among the shop's stalls so they can be repaired or painted and getting them ready for their next trip up Mount Washington. Mount Washington can be seen from our next railroading tour, the Conway Scenic Railroad. Mount Washington is highly visible this morning, ladies and gentlemen, on our right part of the train and towards the rear. Mount Washington is the highest peak north of the Carolinas and east of the Mississippi, 6,288 feet in elevation. The main station here at the Conway Scenic Railroad was built in 1874, and it was really the grandest and finest station they built on this line, being the last one of the last ones they built. It's of a Muscovite-inspired design, and in the upstairs of this building, we still wind a Howard eight-day clock once a week, um, 
to keep folks in the village aware of the time. And when that clock quits, you hear about it. Um, all of the major structures here in the North Conway Terminal area are on the National Register of Historic Places and are afforded some protection from future development uh, that would significantly alter their appearance and their function. Seventy four seventy is our only active steamer at this time. She normally consumes eight hundred to a thousand gallons of water on each round trip to Conway and approximately a ton of coal. Uh, we burn a mixture of anthracite and bituminous to keep the emissions down and also to provide a nice hot fire for which to provide the steam. Uh, Seventy four seventy over this past winter has undergone a major overhaul. We've reboard all pistons and valve liners we've installed are in the process of installing new rings on the pistons. Our travel on the Conway Scenic Railroad is a one-hour round trip through lush farmlands and across the Saco River. We now started to cross the Saco River, one of the major rivers draining the Mount Washington Valley watershed. Like all of our natural assets in the valley, it is popular for outdoor uses such as canoeing, swimming, fishing, and as a wildlife habitat support. On our left as we cross the river, towards the left bank of the river, is a pool that is usually very clear and trout can sometimes be seen basking there. Roundhouse today is the same four stalls that it originally had with very little modification. Uh, two of the stalls are winterized and we do all our winter inside work in those stalls. The other two stalls are basically used for coal storage. turntable you see in front of the roundhouse is basically a bridge that rotates. Uh, several times a day we place the locomotive on the table, get it perfectly balanced, hook up the air hose that drives the air brakes on the train, and using the air compressor on the locomotive, we spin an air motor that allows us to rotate the locomotive to the appropriate stall. Not everything you see on the property here at the Conway Scenic Road is owned by the folks that run the company. We have several pieces of equipment on display that are owned by the 470 Railroad Club in Portland, Maine, and we also have several cabooses that are in private hands. A good majority of this equipment has been restored to operating condition and has had been refurbished to the point that they provide nice displays for the folks to see how things used to be. Uh, several of the wooden cabooses are in excellent condition. It's our goal and mission here to provide an environment where young and old alike can experience the smell of smoke from a steam locomotive, uh, ride behind a steam locomotive, and we pretty much are trying to preserve a 1940s, 50 era operation um, for the benefit of everyone. We are a privately held corporation and we survive entirely upon ticket revenue, uh, purchases in a gift shop. We've been here 20 years, all of them profitable uh, through the dedication of a lot of people that want to see railroading as it was in that era survive. Keeping steam locomotives alive is also a main goal of the White Mountain Central Railroad at Clark's Trading Post.
located at Lincoln, New Hampshire, where we see the depot and Main Street come alive with people ready to ride the train and later see the trained bears. The Climax was built in 1920 in Quarry, Pennsylvania, uh, designed primarily as a logging engine. The Climax originally was designed to burn coal. When we had got it here, we decided to convert it over to wood, uh, only because the wood is a renewable resource. We have plenty of it around here, and it's also a lot cleaner uh, for the locomotive, the cars, and the people uh, than coal is. Other people prefer the Shea or the Heisler. I, I personally like the Climax. It's a good running locomotive. Uh, it runs well, it's easy to maintain, and uh, it has yet to let us down. In all the years we've been running, we uh, haven't missed a trip with it. The Climax is a geared locomotive with an inclined piston driving a transverse shaft which is geared to a center line drive shaft that in turn drives each axle through bevel gears. We're just going to be stopping for a minute or two now to take on some water. The water tower from which we are filling up from came from the old Lincoln paper mill and was used on the B&M Railroad Division. Presently at this time, we will be filling up with roughly 200 gallons of water, and during the course of the day, the locomotive will consume about 600 gallons of water, and we will burn roughly a half a quart of wood. The covered bridge which you are about to go through is a Howe Truss covered bridge and was built in 1904 and is rated for 200 tons. It was painstakingly disassembled piece by piece and reconstructed here on the grounds back in 1964 and is one of the few remaining Howe Truss covered bridges left in existence in the world today. over that bridge, you will be into the infamous Wolfman's <laughs> Territory.
Well, this is it, our world famous end of the tracks. And here on your left hand side, you will notice the beautiful Pemigewasset River that does flow out of Franconia Notch State Park. Well, I guess I'm going to have to apologize for that attack on the train by that old fellow we call the Wolfman. He's a miner for ore, and he believes that he has found a very rare ore here called unobtainium. Well, just because I've never heard of this rare ore doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. The old wolf man believes that he has found some on the right-hand side of our tracks earlier. You may have noticed a large rock with a door on it saying, keep out. Well, that was the entrance to the wolf man's unobtainium mine. And every time we do steam on through his territory, he thinks that we're trying to jump his unobtainium claim and is simply scaring us on by. Father and daughter team of Maureen and Murray Clark perform with their large collection of trained bears. Even as a young boy, Murray Clark was working with bears. We hope you have enjoyed your trip on three of New Hampshire's outstanding railroads. And we look forward to seeing you again on America's Historic Steam Railroad.
Hello, I'm Bob Schreiber. Welcome aboard America's Historic Steam Railroads. Today we're going to visit one of the oldest and busiest historic steam railroads in the United States. In the southeast corner of Pennsylvania, just west of Philadelphia, we find the town of Strasburg. It's here in 1832 that the railroad was chartered and the line that runs through the Amish countryside was born. The people that operate this historic railroad today take great pride in the restoration of some very old passenger cars, box cars, tank cars, and of course, the mighty historic steam locomotives. When passengers ride on these trains, it's like turning back the calendar to the turn of the century. Let's meet some of these people that help preserve our rich heritage on America's historic steam railroads. I think the majority of Americans are interested in nostalgia, and they realize that American steam railroads helped build this country. It was the steam locomotive powering those trains. And people think of the good old days when they see a steam locomotive. Now, a steam locomotive also is very visible. An internal combustion locomotive, a diesel locomotive, has everything covered up by a shroud like an automobile. But a steam locomotive has bared itself to the public. And you can see most of what a steam locomotive is in front of you. And you could see it working. And you can hear it working. And I think that's what fascinates the average person. The first thing in the morning when we finish the hostling in the engine house, and we've completed the things we do inside, we then make sure all the switches are set in the line correctly and we make sure that the, uh, the various points are covered for crossings. And we bring the engine out of the engine house back to the coal wharf. There we coal the tender, make sure we have enough coal for the day. When we're done that, we go back to where the ashes should be removed from the ash pans. And we remove the ashes back there and complete cleaning the fire. Uh, then the fire's finalized for the trip during the morning, and uh, that's about it on the ash track. Then when we're completed with that, and we finish, we take it out and go up to the main line, the beginning of the main line, up an incline. And we run the locomotive a little bit um, hard to blow out the front end of the locomotive and to clean out any matter that may be blocking the drafting for the day. It makes the engine fire better throughout the day. Then we bring the engine back to the location where you see it now and we complete our daily chores. We're going to finish up the hostling to begin the day here at the Strasburg. Why don't you come along with us today and see how we do it, getting ready for the first run of the day. Okay. We're getting oil on the wicks here on the driving boxes so as to provide lubrication throughout the day. This is journal oil, and it's a thinner type oil. There are a number of oils used on an engine, and this is used on the shoes and wedges and used in the journals of the tender. That's the air compressor or air pump, which is pumping air into the main reservoirs of the locomotive to run all the various things that run off of air. Now I'm going to put oil into the various lubricating points 
We don't want to do this too early on a very hot day as today because the oil tends to get thin and run out of its lubricating points. The route over which we are traveling this afternoon is one of the oldest railroad rights of way in the entire world. It was granted to the Strasburg Railroad Company by an act of the Pennsylvania State Legislature on June the 9th, 1832. For over a century and a half, this little railroad has been serving the community of Strasburg. Coming into view on the left-hand side of the train, you'll see a neat row of little red cabooses. These belong to the Red Caboose Lodge, a privately operated motel, which is one of the very few places in the world where you can spend the night in a real caboose. A little further off to the left, you can see the flagpole and tower of the Toy Train Collectors Association, which houses a fantastic selection of antique toy trains. Now, in case you've been wondering about our speed, it's really quite simple. The oldest timetable we ever found for our line was in the Lancaster Inland Daily on December the 2nd, 1851. We still follow that same basic schedule today. So if you ever wondered just how fast great-great-grandpa traveled here on the Strasburg, well, this is it. We try to keep it under 80 miles an hour at all times. We have to ask you to avoid the temptation of jumping off and running ahead of the locomotive. That just infuriates the engineer. And it makes him a little mad, too. The large buildings coming into view on the left-hand side belong to the Espen Shade Turkey Farm. It's believed to be one of the oldest turkey farms in the country has been in the same family for about eight generations. This area of Lancaster was settled in the very early 1700s. Route 741 running parallel to our tracks off to the right, the road that you took into our station today was originally a Conestoga wagon trail opened about 1710. It led from Philadelphia to the Indian outpost at Carlisle, just west of Harrisburg. Cherry Hill is next, Cherry Hill. This is the largest suburban stop on our line. Now the station lies on the left hand side of the train, very close to the tracks, just before the next road crossing. Now, I'll admit it will probably look a bit small to you, but that's because of the high rate of speed at which we go by. And try not to miss the sign on the station. The sign reads population 17, more or less. That means more when we get there, a lot less when we leave. The passenger cars are basically wooden coaches. These coaches were in fairly poor shape when they arrived. Here at the Strasburg Railroad, we return the coaches to their original condition including the interiors, the hardware, the various fittings, uh, the lighting fixtures, and of course the seats. When we restore a car, we try to save as much of the original car as we possibly can and still maintain a car that's safe for daily operation. A lot of the interior decorative things are original. What happens when we find wood rot in a car, as you can see here, um, what we will do is cut out a lot of this rotted area, uh, make it a nice flat surface, 
and we will treat the rotten area with a liquid epoxy, hoping that it won't continue to rot uh, in the future. Um, then we will replace new wood on top of the flat surface, glue it, and screw it together, make it as solid as we can. And we also are in the habit of painting everything to seal the water. We're very fortunate to have the skilled and the dedicated employees that we have at Strasburg. We're very fortunate to have that kind of employee here at the railroad because that's really what makes all of this possible. Skilled employees that are dedicated to the preservation of railroad equipment. At the present time, we have four steam locomotives. The number 31 was the first one acquired, an 060 from Canada. The number 90, which is our largest locomotive, a 210 from the Great Western Railroad in Colorado, where it worked hauling sugar beets. We also acquired a 260 Mogul type, number 89, from the Canadian National Railroad. Recently, we acquired a 480 locomotive, the only one of its type in operation. It was a former Norfolk and Western locomotive. We restored it here over a two-year period at over $600,000 in cost. And it is one of the larger locomotives on the Strasburg Railroad and will be featured on our longer trains. Now, for the past few miles, we've been traveling through what is commonly known as the Dutch country, the fertile farmlands of the Plain People, the Amish, the Mennonites, and the Dunkers. Within a 10-mile radius of our railroad lives some 18,000 Amish people. They live a very peaceful and quiet life of hard work and deep religious devotion, exactly as their ancestors did when they arrived here about 275 years ago from Germany, Switzerland, and portions of France. The big farm coming into view in the valley off to the right is a typical Lancaster County Amish farm. Neat, clean, but very plain. No carpets, just a few curtains upstairs. No radio, television, or telephone. In fact, no electricity. Attention, all children on board the train. Do you believe in ghosts? Well, I think you will very shortly. Many, many years ago, in the second valley off to our right, beyond those hills, there ran a little narrow-gauge railroad, the Lancaster, Oxford, and Southern. Now, it's been gone for over 75 years, but sometimes when we blow our whistle here at Carpenter's Crossing, the ghost of the old L.O. and S. answers back. Listen carefully. <laughs> it 
<laughs> no, no, folks. You just think that's an echo. Actually, we pay that old ghost twenty-seven fifty a day to sit over there and do that for us. Very shortly, we will be crossing the Strasburg's one and only bridge. You won't see this bridge, I hope. It's supposed to be underneath us. But you will see where the Pumpkinville Turnpike runs right underneath our tracks. This is a big bridge, so it's darn near 16 feet long. Lemon Place Junction is next Lemon Place Junction, where the main line of the Strasburg meets the main line of Amtrak and Conrail. A short distance ahead, our tracks will curve sharply to the left, and we'll come alongside the main line running between New York and Chicago. The famous Broadway Limit is passed by here daily, running between those two cities. The locomotive pulling our train this afternoon is old number 90, built back in 1924 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Together with its tender, it weighs 186 tons, carries 9 tons of coal and 10,000 gallons of water. For just one of our little round trip excursions, our locomotive will consume 1,000 gallons of water and one half ton of coal, all hand shoveled by our fireman. Our engineer and fireman this afternoon are Tom and Andy. In just a moment, we'll be uncoupling the locomotive from the front of the train. It will be passing right by us on the interchange track. Have your cameras ready to couple up at the other end for the journey back to Strasburg. Now, as old number 90 goes by, let's give our engineer and fireman a great big wave, yell, and cheer. They deserve it. They love it. And besides, if we don't, they just might possibly forget to pick us up and take us back to Strasburg. Easter weekend, we have the Easter Bunny riding the train. The Easter Bunny is different than most bunnies in that the bunny operates as a mime and doesn't talk. Goes to the coaches, greets the children, gives each child a candy treat, and poses for pictures. It's very, very popular. At Christmas time, on the weekends preceding Christmas, Santa rides each train. He goes through the trains just as the Easter Bunny does, greets the children, and gives them a candy treat, and poses for pictures very, very popular here in Lancaster County. One of the reasons is because the parents don't have to stand in line. Santa comes to them. All they have to do is ride the train.
there have been occasions where we have taken on a project to rebuild a locomotive for an individual who happens to have the equipment and it is just interested in having a locomotive operational for his own purposes. And this individual is not necessarily the uh, uh, owner of another railroad, so we do undertake work of that nature. If we don't have the parts and can't trade someone for the parts, we, we use a lot of things for barter. Uh, it's typical of this industry. Then we have to make our parts. And we have a full machine shop. Uh, we have a very, very good foundry at our disposal. And we have actually had a lot of patterns made, uh, a lot of castings made, or we'll, we'll machine parts from billet. So we do make a lot of our own replacement parts. And we make the pieces that go inside the main parts to uh, the, the uh, I'll say like the nozzles for the injectors. Uh, we make these parts and keep them in stock so that we have uh, a ready supply of parts that we can use to keep our locomotives going indefinitely, we hope. One of the most enjoyable things for me is to see people come to the Strasburg Railroad and uh, experience turn-of-the-century transportation. It's one of the few types of historic uh, displays or, or uh, museum-type situations where the people can actually experience part of history. Here at the Strasburg Railroad, you become part of that history 
by being a passenger. You can hear it, you can feel it, you can smell it, you can taste it. You get a real experience that takes you back to the turn of the century. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to preserve this historic equipment and we're trying to give people a feel for what it was like. So that's what I really enjoy here at the railroad. By the time we reach the station, we will have traveled nine miles over the rails on this street. We hope you have enjoyed this view of Strasburg Railroad. And when you do come to ride on the railroad, be sure to allow enough time to visit the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum with its many railroad artifacts. And of course, the main hall with its great collection of locomotives. And it's located just across the street from the Strasburg Railroad Station. With such attractions as the Caboose Motel, the Choo Choo Barn, the Toy Train Association Museum, the Strasburg Railroad. The immediate area of Strasburg, Pennsylvania is a rail fan's delight. Thank you for watching America's Historic Steam Railroad. Enjoyed it, thank you.